Well, hello again YouTube. Today we're going to be working on the old planer again. It's been a while since I've been on this thing. Today we're going to take these feed rolls here. This is the out feed roll. This is the in feed roll. Let's see if we can get in a little closer. You can see by the <coughs> serrations in the roll, it is designed to grab the raw lumber and pull it in. Um, they've got a little bit of surface corrosion on them, not too bad. But one thing that they don't have is uh, right here on the ends of the rolls, divots so that where you can run between centers. Um, we're gonna check out the trueness of the uh, of the shafts here and uh, clean them up, and then uh, eventually these are gonna get converted to to uh, a roller bearing type or a ball bearing instead of a glide bearing. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that just right now, um, but sometime later on down the road that will happen. The drivetrain as well, it'll probably get uh, converted to, to the ball bearings. Now, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> here's the head of the, of the machine. Let me try and grab the camera with another hand here. And as you rotate it, you can see there's a, these half moon discs on Oops, on the head. This is a square head actually. And these are no longer uh, allowed by OSHA and various government agencies. There's five screws on the knives, four on the, uh, the blind half moon parts. Let me get in a little closer here. You can see here the, the screws. Now if one of these lets go, the others usually won't be able to hold. And so this thing has a tendency to catastrophically fail, which is why this type of uh, knife setup was outlawed. And I'll take you in to the planer and show you um, what a modern head looks like if you haven't seen one yet. So this here is in a comparison, uh, you have a modern head. Now you have the knife right here, then there's a gib, and through, this is a little different tile, uh, style, style, get the twist out of your tongue. Um, the set screws are in, incorporated into the head. Some of them have them incorporated into the gib itself. It doesn't really matter which way they go, uh, the end effect is the same. Um, the reason behind that is uh, the, uh, Centrifugal force will help push this gib against the knife, thus keeping it from slipping out of the head. Now, if the bolts are completely loose, of course, the thing's going to go, go sailing out of there. But uh, this is what a modern. All right, head today's like. operation involves taking these feed rolls and uh, cleaning them up, getting them, getting the belly out of them. Now, a feed roll when it when it. Uh, is in working order or working in a machine will have a tendency to wear in the middle wherever you run the lumber through uh, the most on the machine. This one does have a little bit of a belly and it's noticeable when the lumber goes through and it starts drifting off to one side. Now here's the outfeed roll. It too has a little bit of a belly. These rolls are solid steel and so I've got plenty of material with to play with. Um, the thing that I'm going to have to watch out for is that the diameters at the end of the at the end of the operation are identical, or within a few tenths of a millimeter, uh, one or two anyway. <clears throat> Anything more than that, and you've changed the gear ratio of the feed, and your one of your rolls is running a little faster than the other, or in some case slower. So what that entails, we're going to set up here on the three jaw chuck to get a center hole punched in the end um, using the steady rest. First we're going to have to set up the steady rest because this is a long piece um, to the diameter of the shaft, of the stub shaft here, uh, which I believe is 35 millimeters. And then uh, bring it out so that we can take the tailstock all the way to the end of the machine and uh, punch our hole in. Uh, because this is got so much overhang these are solid steel rollers. There's going to be a little bit of sag, and that's something that uh, 
really won't benefit us in the long run. So let me get the camera set up and the machine set up. Um, the tool for today is going to be, or the turning tool, are these Sandvik WNMGs. This is from Grant. The uh, bits, these have a positive uh, cutting angle. I've had pretty good experience with this particular uh, insert, so I'm going to try it out for today. If not, we'll have to figure out something else. But I think this steel is soft enough to where we can actually do something with it. Alrighty, so we're going to start set up here on this uh, four card chuck. This is an interesting chuck. I haven't showcased this before. Um, this isn't uh, as typical. Um, well, what do you call it? The the type where the where you keep turning and the jaws keep opening up. You turn this one up to a certain point, and then uh, you slide the jaws out. Uh, there is a little pin that comes out as you turn the key. Right here he is, and then you back it up until it stops. Give it a little. Then you can adjust the jaws notch wise. Oops, that was a little bit too much. Now this is one of the shafts for the gears in the uh, in the planer. It's 32 millimeters in diameter and um, of the same material as the feed rollers. This one shows quite a bit of wear so it will get replaced later on but for setting up the uh, steady rest it's going to be good enough. So we're going to wipe this off a little bit. The weasel snot. Tom Lipton, thank you for the Liptonese. Said steady rest today. If we get it off of there. Come on. So we're only going to go in tight. Let me see if we can, if you guys can see that any type. Well, not real good. Let me try and zoom you in here a little better. And of course, I'd have the damn zoom button on the camera that's got some ickum on there, all stuck, so we can't zoom with the remote again. All right, now you can see, yeah, let's focus that a little, bring that in a little more. Okay, there's the stub shaft. Now this is a roller type. I'm just going to hand tighten. Take out the set screws. Bring in the rollers till they touch. And voila, we have a 
initial setup for the steady rest. So now we can take the roller out. And now we're ready to set up for the main rolls. Let me zoom you out here so you can kind of follow along. The whole process, tail stock all the way to the end. Yes, this is one heavy booger. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but uh, I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of probably 50, 60 pounds, maybe a little more. So, pain is when this thing tips off like it just did. And the jaws don't line up. Yeah. It binds up a little. So Maximum amount of travel on the on the cross slide here and on the on the on the slide. Make sure we can get all the way back here. Okay, looks like we got plenty of room. what am I thinking? We're just putting in holes and then later turning this between centers for accuracy. So it really doesn't matter what the cross line is doing, we're not going to tool it up anyway. Handy dandy little tool, this is from Hoffman. A Morse taper cleaner. Albrecht Chuck. Morse taper four. And a big fought center drill. Wiener slider. And our, our ripples are at 710, so that might be enough.
the next hole, I'll get you in a little closer so you can get a better shot at what's going on in here. Some light on the subject. Let me uh, move you around so you get a better. Alrighty. Nobody really has showcased a, a uh, multifix fastening system on their videos, so I guess I'll be the first to do so. This is the multifix C. <coughs> C. Um, not sure who made this. There's a multitude of manufacturers that put them out nowadays. They work similar to the Alorus tool post, only um, with these you have grooves in the in the tool holder, and uh, you lift it up and rotate it around uh, on the post. You don't actually rotate the post like you do the Alorus. Now, some people are going to say, "Well, the Alorus is the bomb." Sorry, fellas, I've tried the Alorus. Um, I just can't get friendly with it. Uh, for one thing, there's too many Chinese knockoffs out there and that spoiled it for me, let me tell you. So, to set the center height, you just loosen it. There is a little uh, notch up here on the... Let me see if we can rotate you around just a wee bit. There, oops. There we go. You can't see it quite here, but on top of the... Uh, the uh, no, what do you call it? I'm having a brain fart here. Anyway, this uh, tightens the tool, tool holder to the tool post, and on top there's a notch. And this notch indicates where it is loosened, and usually it's with the axis this way on the, on the tool holder. I have a size for my closing lathe, an A. I should have bought the B, but now I've got the A mostly for uh, oh a threading tool. I'll be showcasing that later on. You guys are going to love it because there's no more dials on cross slides and all that nonsense. It, it's, it's the bomb, let me tell you. Anyway, that for a later project. So all you have to do is it's the same thing on the Alorus as it is on this uh, Multifix B. You just uh, use this little set screw here to get the height just right. Let me see here. Of course you line it up to your tailstock. A little low here. That looks about right. Alright. Now when you tighten up on these, even on the allure, sometimes you'll you'll notice the, the tool will lift and you have to make an adjustment to get it back to where it needs to be. Actually I should just get my dead center because it is a little more accurate. The point on it is a little pointier. And that looks pretty good. So I guess it wasn't that far off. All right. And that's that. So we'll uh, refix, reposition the camera so you can follow along with the rest of the setup. Alrighty, here's my other center that I'm going to be using. Um, I turned this one myself. We've got a 60 degree taper on it. Um, I did put a notch in it to where I only have to 
uh, dress the the taper on the, the cone on this once in a while. Um, this notch here goes into the first jaw and then that way it's always usually pretty well lined up. But I recently reground these jaws because they were bell mouth and they had quite a bit of run out. So now we're gonna go ahead and redress this because they do look like shit. Now we've got plenty of travel. guys are going ho oh. and that's fine um, but I like the multi-fix so there we go So now we've got to turn the check the other way. Success. Mr. Bozo has left the building. So, we'll uh, get this all set up for turning between centers now. And we'll tune you back in as soon as we get that set up done. I'm sure you've seen this all before. So, I'll save you the agony okay, with this dog. Um, I'm going to have to run this a lot slower in this configuration. Just by a reason that the dog here will throw this whole setup so far out of balance it'll make the machine go crazy and, and uh, jump around on its foundation and we don't need that so on this dial let me bring you in a little closer show you how this machine is set up it's a little different than most we have our ripples here right now we're set at 710 We've got our primary set, or our primary set here, and the secondary is set to three, which on three is 710 RPM. We're going to have to reduce this considerably. We're going to try it with 180 and see how this thing behaves itself. So we're going to throw this lever. Well, 
I'm gonna have to put the camera back on the tripod because I can't do it with one hand. Thank you. 